<laughs> Why is this so hard? If you've ever found it tough doing photography, then this is the video for you. And if you haven't, you should watch it anyway, because you're probably doing something wrong. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now, before we get going today, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Now and again, I get messages from people and it's nice because a lot of them are very complimentary, but then it's often followed up by the person saying that I make doing photography look easy. That's understandable because I go to a nice location, say some things to camera, and then a decent image appears on the screen. But it's absolutely not the case, and I don't want that to be the overall impression. So I thought today I would share some of the things that I find really tough about doing photography, and then give you some of the solutions I employ to try and fix them. Number one is people. Now, in my old job, I used to just lock them up. And if you want to find out more about that, I suggest you go to the link down below and have a look at my book, Illumination. But I can't do that anymore, obviously. Uh, so I need to find new ways of dealing with people. Now, the thing with people is that they're so beautiful, but can also be so fucking annoying. It's one of the reasons I stopped doing wedding photography because I loved the actual day where I'm taking the photographs but dealing with the clients and the people and sometimes annoying people at the wedding was just incredibly frustrating and it sucked some of the enjoyment out of it for me. And I think the key really in all of your life is to try and surround yourself as much as possible with good people. People that are going to inspire you and make you better. But it is difficult. One of the things I find tricky when I'm going to do landscape photography is turning up to locations where there's just so many people because it's not what I'm looking for when I'm trying to make a connection with the landscape. Because when I go and do landscape photography, generally I want to be on my own having that kind of solitude and enjoyment. And over the last 18 months or so, more and more people have been flooding into the landscape and it's frustrating because more times than I would like, these people are not looking after the landscape with fires burning and leaving rubbish and all that kind of thing. That's incredibly frustrating. I also find the general sort of toxicity of the photography community online extremely annoying as well. And it's on both sides of whatever opinion you're having and it's frustrating and I just don't really see the point with all the troubles that we have going on in the world, why people are getting upset at each other about photography. It's silly. What I try to do is remind myself that if I'm on Twitter, particularly, it's not a real place. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, head to head to there. Overall, I just try to be positive, although it is difficult. But by showing a little bit of empathy towards people that have a differing opinion to me, uh, I can get an understanding of what they're thinking and we can have discourse and disagreements without it becoming personal and silly. Uh, but yeah, people. Right, number two kind of feeds on from the last one, and that is getting attention. Because whether we like it or not, we need people. And if you want to feel some kind of success with your photography, most of the time that's going to be for other people to like your work. And certainly if you ever want to start making some money from your photography, there needs to be some attention on what you are doing. Not necessarily on you, but definitely on your work. And I find that extremely difficult. People think because I've got a reasonably big audience, that comes easily and I promise you it does not. I find it really difficult. It's generally, what we're generally talking about here is marketing and it's hard and it's constant. And it wears me down, particularly doing it on social media, which ah, I just hate social media at the moment. My Instagram feed, if you've been, if you're following me on there, the frequency of it has gone down. Consumption, most of the time, I don't get any enjoyment from it. I am starting to have a few interesting conversations on Twitter though, uh, but there's a lot to dislike about social media. I think YouTube's different because I like the the longer form. Podcasts are great, but yeah, 
promoting yourself on social media is is tricky and I don't like it. How I've come to terms with this and the solution I now employ is that it's kind of a hare in the tortoise type situation where you want to be the tortoise. So it's little things, slow things, constantly that start to build up your reputation. I guess consistency is important. There's no such thing as a big break. That's one of the other things I learned a long time ago when I first started becoming known by a few people, I posted a picture that got shared by Canon. And I text my mate saying, ah, I've made it. Canon are paying attention to me. And I could not have been more wrong because they literally didn't care. The same sort of thing happened when I first got one of these videos shared on F-stoppers. I thought, oh, this is brilliant. I've been shared on F-stoppers, I've made it. I, I really don't think the big break exists. It's just a slow, long slog. It's all these things that start stacking on top of each other, which is going to build your brand, your career, your work, whatever you want into something that people enjoy and pay attention to. Again, go back to the people side of things. I think it helps if you are a good person. If you're authentic, that's hopefully gonna come through uh, to the people who are paying attention to you. Am I right? Is that, is that true? Now, if you've spent any time trying to learn photography, whether it's online, in a classroom, or in a magazine, you will know that a huge part of the focus that gets put on this is to learn the technical aspects of photography. It kind of often leads us into believing that we need to have technical perfection in our images. Now, I don't believe this, and I don't really consider myself to be a technical photographer at all, because I think a great image can be a technical mess, but a technically perfect image that's an artistic mess will never be great. As an example, I've been filming a video for The Raw Room about, I don't know, it's the ultimate guide to doing panorama photography. And within that, I discuss parallax shift. And there's other things in photography like this, like hyperfocal distance, using filters, and it can all so quickly just get confusing. And most of the time, we don't even need to know these things. If we just do the basics, the photograph will turn out right, especially if you're focusing on good composition and things like that. An image doesn't need to be technically perfect. And I also think there's too much focus on the gear and what lenses you're using and all that, and the camera you're using, and it's just not required. What I suggest is that you take a look at things like the compositional rules, artistic elements particularly, things like shape and form and lines and color and start to learn about these because they're all going to make you a better photographer, much more so than knowing what parallax shift is. Art can be taught. It's not an inherent eye that people have. It can be taught and you can get better at it. Many parts of photography are technical though. There's no way to get around this. And a critical solution for this is to develop a good workflow. It's a bit like when we drive a car, it all just becomes automatic pilot in the end because it's so well practiced. We want it to be the same with our photography. So we're not faffing around and struggling with tripods and our camera and lenses and filters and settings. That needs to become second nature because we've done it so many times. We've practiced it and then we can focus on just getting great images or the best image that I'm capable of getting. Now, before we look at the next one, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, one of the problems I definitely don't have is my website because it's built with Squarespace and it's just the best and easiest place for photographers to make a website. You don't need any technical skills. That's why, because you just drag a few bits around, use one of their beautiful templates, put some of your images on there and a bit of your words and very quickly you'll have a unique and beautiful looking website. People can contact you through it. You can then upgrade it to an online store and sell things like prints and merchandise and anything else that takes your fancy. They've got incredible customer support. I've used them for years and you won't be sorry if you give them a try. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today and then if you like what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN and you'll get 10% off your first purchase.
Now, the next problem that I think makes my photography difficult is being too comfortable. Doing things that are hard and doing things that make us uncomfortable make us better and make us stronger. And we need to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone as much as possible. Just simple things that I'm talking about are like things like the weather. I try to force myself to go out in bad weather because great images can be captured in those conditions. I find it difficult sometimes finding new locations and then going and exploring them when I don't know them. That can be stressful sometimes, particularly if it's an isolated place where you're off by yourself and you don't know the terrain. I find getting up early for sunrise absolutely horrendous. I failed the other day, I had the alarm set to go out and I just turned over and went back to sleep. It's difficult, it's a constant battle for me. I also often find myself getting comfy creatively as well. I end up taking the same old shots and I lose inspiration and I just feel like I'm going through the motions. Now one way I deal with that is to have a couple of projects on the go. One that you can do in a day and one that's sort of extends over a number of years even. That's what I've currently got going on. Probably one of the worst things I've been finding and as I get older, I'm 40 now, I've got children, I've just increasingly become more fearful of everything. I used to be scared of literally nothing when I was in my 20s particularly, but the older I get, the more scared I get. And that makes all of those things I've just mentioned even more difficult because the desire to be comfy just seems to keep growing. So I think overall it's just absolutely vital to keep pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. And what you find is that as you do that, the comfort zone gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you start to do things very, very often that other people don't do. And it's at that point that people will start paying attention to you. You're doing interesting things. You've got interesting things to say and talk about. It just makes you better and stronger. Next one is time. It's a cliche, but time is the only thing you can't buy. And for me, it's always felt especially precious, but the pressures on our time change over the years. Back in the day when I sort of rediscovered photography in my early twenties, I found it really difficult getting time away from my girlfriend, who's now my wife. And sometimes I'd have to drag her there and she wouldn't want to wait while I took the picture, but then when I became a professional and it started becoming what I do, those pressures sort of melted away and new pressures arrived as I realized that I actually need to get a shot or I need to get a video or I need to say something interesting because my, my business depends on it. And those pressures obviously continue, but we all have different time pressures. I find time wasting really, really stressful. I think to maximize your time, apart from spend, like we said at the start, spending time with good people, is to find some fulfillment and something that gives you meaning. And I think for almost all of us, getting outside, reconnecting with nature and the landscape is going to give us that. So with my photography, my landscape photography, I'm trying to really focus on that and just be present in those moments when you're there. In hindsight, when I look back at some of these images, a lot of the best ones have been captured on days where I was just going for a walk or having a little exploration and then something happened. I saw something and the image made itself essentially. Yeah, time. It's uh, And that's also why I so appreciate the time you are giving to me. I hope I repay it with content you enjoy and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Do check out my book and Squarespace down below. Cheers.